to kick things off, I'd like to introduce myself. I, my name is Sophie Zdenkowski. I've left my, my last name off, the, off my little um, intro there on, on my screen. Um, but I work for FDM. Um, we are a IT consultancy who launch uh, grad careers in technology. And I'm the university partnerships manager there. Um, I have an education background in communications. I studied communications at Western Sydney University. Uh, I also then went on to study careers education at RMIT and I'm currently studying uh, psychology at UNSW. So hi, hi fellow students. Um, I also used to have a long, long career at UNSW um, and I worked there for about 12 years uh, connecting students with employers and then in 2020 I jumped the fence and I joined FDM as their university partnership manager helping FDM connect with universities. Um, so the majority of my career, I have uh, known that I'm a people person and I really enjoy connecting people um, and creating valuable relationships. So I spent the vast majority of my career in relationship management of sorts, helping students connect with employers. And I'm really passionate about that. I'm really passionate about launching careers and seeing careers take off um, and helping that journey. Um, something about myself, though, that I've witnessed in my work and in my personal life is that I get really energised when I'm able to be creative. So that might be in my spare time with my arts, but also when I'm at work and I get to do workshop creation and I get to work with students like yourself in these sort of workshops. So thank you. This is a really energising activity for me to be doing. So that's me, but I've also brought along my team and I'd like them to do quick introductions so that you know who you're working with later on today. Um, I might pass over to Anthony. Anthony with us. Thanks so much, Sophie, and welcome everybody. Uh, so as Sophie mentioned, my name is Anthony. I am the graduate recruitment team lead at FDM. Uh, so I work really closely with the rest of the team um, to make sure that we're finding the best talent in the market uh, to come and join us here at FDM. So a little bit about myself. I'm originally from New Zealand. Um, so I've been over in Australia for uh, about seven or eight years now, really enjoying it. It's based in Sydney. Um, over in New Zealand, I studied a Bachelor of Commerce in Tourism and Management, uh, which I really enjoyed. So I don't come from a tech background. Uh, but that's something I do love about FDM. You don't have to come from a tech background as well. So I've really enjoyed working in tech and learning as much as I have so far. Um, so before I moved into FDM, I was actually working in the travel industry. So I really love to travel. Um, it's one of my passions. But another passion I have is reading as well. And I'm currently on a the last book in a 14th book series, which I'm really excited to finish up as well. So thanks so much for having me today. Um, I'll pass over to Selena. Great, thanks Anthony. Hi everyone, my name is Selena and I'm a senior graduate recruiter here at the FDM group. Um, I've been in my role for more than two years now. Um, and a little bit about myself, I studied a degree in psychology from UNSW, so I'm really grateful to be here and just to be able to give back to um, my university as well. Um, back at university, I was quite involved in a lot of um, volunteering activities, specifically with the UNSW Careers Department, and that's really where I found my passion in um, helping students and now graduates start their careers, um, specifically in tech. Um, and yeah, it's been a great journey so far here at FDM. Um, in my spare time, I really enjoy the creatives as well. So I'm really into my music. And um, recently I've picked up doing a lot of video editing as well. So yeah, that's a little bit about myself. Um, I'll pass it on to my colleague, Caitlin. Thanks, Selena. Um, hi guys, my name is Caitlin and I'm a graduate recruiter at FDM. Um, so I've been with the company since January of 2020. So I started just before the pandemic hit. Um, so I guess I've done a lot of weird learning experiences in that this last year and a half was nice. A um, bit about me, I started. I studied at the University of Canberra with a Bachelor of Human Resource Management um, and then relocated to Wollongong to work in Sydney um, after I graduated. So um, yeah, and I guess a bit of a fun fact about me, um, I, I, I am a twin um, and yeah, uh, I might pass it on to Abigail. Hello Wit, um, lovely to be with you all this evening. I'm Abigail, I am a graduate recruiter at FDM Group. Um, I come from a consulting background. I studied international relations from the University of Sydney 
And something about me, um, I like to travel and I did a whole bunch of overseas internships and exchange programs while at uni. Um, I'd like to pass it on to Bella. Hi guys, I'm Bella. Um, I have recently joined FDM um, from New Zealand. So I just moved to Sydney, which is exciting. Um, I studied law and psychology at the University of Otago. Um, in my spare time, I like to get outside and play lots of sports and I'm excited for lockdown to be over so I can join some new sports clubs over here. Um, I'll pass it on to Anurit. Anurit's not with us today, so I'll pass it on to Sophie. Thanks, Selena. Good catch. Um, so, guys, that's the team. The big team is all here for you guys um, to facilitate the activities later on. But I did want to just point out, you have just witnessed an example of public speaking. Um, so it comes in all forms, and I want you to start breaking down your notions of what public speaking looks like, because it can be simply open your mouth to introduce yourself. So moving on. Um, I do want to just indicate who FDM is. I wouldn't be surprised if you haven't heard of us. We're fairly new on the Australian market. Um, essentially, we launch really exciting careers in tech, um, and it doesn't matter what discipline people come from, as long as they're passionate and show attitude and aptitude. And we recruit all year round, which is why we're keen to talk to students all year round and run these worthwhile workshops. So that's what brings us here today. Now, why is it important to develop public speaking skills? Um, the second you open your mouth, uh, to an audience, you are public speaking, whether it's online, whether it's in front of an auditorium. Um, it's really important that you start practicing these skills, um, that you start articulating um, your thoughts and values and contributions. And the more experience you get, the more confident you become. You can't just reach into a bag and find a tool and suddenly become confident. Confidence comes with experience. So we're going to give you a little bit of experience um, with a few tips along the way. Now you wanna be remembered for the right reasons when you meet with employers, but also your professional network, which includes, includes your fellow WIT members. They are your network. And so you need to be positively speaking um, about yourself and your ideas amongst your own network as well. So the agenda is going to be pretty simple. As mentioned earlier, we're gonna go through some tips and tricks. We're gonna go through some public speaking across the settings. We're gonna do an activity and then do a wrap up. So if you have pen and paper handy or a place where you can take some notes, I do recommend jotting down some ideas because when it comes to the activity, we're giving you a short amount of time to sort of write down your prompts. Um, and if you have some ideas from the session written down in front of you, you might feel a little bit more confident about that. So get some pen and paper out if it is handy. Now I'm gonna start with a blank slate because I come from a comms background. And if I had my way, I would ask all communications to start with a blank slate. Often we jump in and start talking before we've put some thought into what the message is. So there's three key things that I want you to consider every time you go to communicate something. Very, very basic. I want you to know the message. What is it that you're trying to get across? What is your purpose? What do you want to be remembered? What is the message? Very, very crucial. Then I want you to find out what is the medium because we communicate across a number of platforms in a number of ways, whether it's written, whether it's verbal, whether it's online, whether it's face-to-face, -face, the medium matters because it changes the way that you communicate and it changes the effectiveness of your message. You must know and understand the medium. And finally, you need to know your audience. You would be surprised how many people want to get a message out without actually understanding that a message is completely ineffective if it's not received by the audience. You must understand who you're speaking to, what it is, what framework it is that they're coming to, um, coming to you with so that they can receive the message. And if they aren't a receptive audience, communication failure. It takes someone actually receiving the message for communication to be effective. So know the message, know the medium, and know your audience. Now, I'm glad to say that the message is going to be one of three prompts. So we've narrowed it down. The medium is going to be in an online Zoom platform. And as professionals, you need to get more confident speaking online. So this is a good form to, to practice in. And your audience 
is your peers. And we're going to be doing it in small groups, so it's less intimidating, but it's really positive to share with your peers um, a little bit of practice and you get to see them as well. Now, some tips. And I say tips to consider because I'm anti-templates. I am not a template person. I think it's really important that we give ideas and we give suggestions and we give examples like I did um, earlier on by getting the team to introduce themselves. But as you saw, everybody was different. Everybody was themselves. And I need you to take that with you. So these are just tips to consider. First off, I wanna normalize nervous. When it comes to public speaking, everybody gets nervous, everybody. I myself do workshops and presentations. This week I've, I've done one or two every day and I still get nervous. I still get heart palpitations when the adrenaline comes. I, um, I still sometimes forget to breathe, believe it or not. Um, and depending on who I'm speaking to, sometimes I even start wringing my hands underneath and I get the jitters. And I do this for a living. I've done this, I won't tell you how long I've done this for, over a decade, like it's, it's a long time I've been in my career giving workshops, giving presentations and public speaking. Nervous is normal. And I don't want you to think because you're nervous, you're not a good public speaker. Because I can say I get nervous, but I can also say I'm a good public speaker. So I want you to remove the association of nervous, meaning that you're bad at public speaking, or nervousness, meaning you're bad at, at anything. Nervousness goes as you increase your experience, yeah? So it's important that you are authentic and that you relate through emotion. And sometimes that's by saying, hey, I get nervous too. Or sometimes that might be saying, oh, I'm just gonna catch my breath before I get going. It means you're authentic. So nervous is normal. Keep it simple. When it comes to public speaking, this is not the time for really complex language. It's not the time to get your essay out and demonstrate um, all the theoretical framework, you need to simplify things because your audience only has so much capacity to remember. So you need to condense your language down and keep your messages nice and simple for them to follow. I recommend scripting and then throwing out the script. Now this is hard. This comes with practice. Um, but what I mean by that is I want you to put in the planning. I want you to put in the prep work. I want you to put a skeleton frame of what you're going to say. I want you to draft out some sentences. I want you to practice saying those sentences out loud. But then when it comes to talking to the audience, I do not want you to read. I want you to have the framework in your mind. And there's a few different tricks you can try with that by trying with your skeleton framework, working through a logical sequence, Another trick, which you may have seen me do earlier today, is I had pictures coming up on my slide. Those pictures prompted me to tell me what I was about to speak to next and to keep it concise. So you can have pictures in your mind or potentially pictures on your slide that keep you to point, but also you're not reading because when we read, we come across robotic, inauthentic, and we need to develop that confidence when you throw away the script. And if possible, you just need to stop thinking about yourself because I need you to remember you've got an audience that you're speaking to and you need to know that you're connecting with them. Have a think about how are you engaging with them? What sort of questions are you asking? How might they be receiving the information that they're receiving from you? Is it, um, it's not all about you. It's not all about happening, what's happening in your head. You might be nervous, but if you can shift your focus to your audience and what they might be thinking, that can take some of the pressure off. Finally, as I mentioned, you need to practice. Please don't let a presentation in front of, uh, you know, a class tutorial be the first time that you've spoken those words out loud. Please don't let an interview with an employer be the first time that you've told stories about your experiences. You need to practice. You need to practice the articulation of those ideas. You need to get some feedback on how you're coming across. Um, a really handy thing that one of my fellow recruiters used to do is record herself. That way, no one else has to see it ever. Um, but you can actually see what you look like on screen if you have to do an online interview. You can actually hear what you sound like and go, oh, I should probably rephrase that. Practice really helps. Practice to the mirror, practice to a camera, practice with an audience, whether it be friends or family. It really does make the difference. 
So just some tips to think about. But now I wanna to move to a few words on humility and particularly as I'm speaking to women in technology and I know some of you out there are males and I want you to think about this too. We are taught, and this has been something that has been taught even when I was growing up, that hum being humble is a better version than boasting about ourselves. And what that has done to us is we have gone to a place where we've begun rubbishing ourselves before we open our mouths. And I'm here to tell you that it's not cool. It's not cool in your personal lives. It is not cool in a professional world. And it's not cool in a professional world where you want to get ahead. Yeah, where you want to be getting a job, where you want people to give you opportunities. We need to take the rubbish talk out of our language because your ideas, your feelings, your contributions are valid. Everything that you want to share is a valid contribution. And so I want to remove some of these sayings out of your language. If you start a conversation with someone else saying, well, this is a silly idea, but I don't have much experience in this space, but my, but my idea is, well, I, I'm, I'm actually really bad at this, but I, I guess I'll give it a go. Now, this is just something that I'm thinking, but I might change my mind. I, I'm, I'm not sure. All of these things are undermining um, your message. And I want you to listen to yourself and catch yourself. And I want you to listen to others and I want you to catch them. I need you to take it out because you're not adding value to your message and you're not adding value to the room. In fact, you're taking value away. When you're speaking to an audience and you undermine yourself to begin with, you are automatically making that audience not trust you. They trust you a little bit less or they emotionally invest in you and they go, oh, they feel sorry for you. Oh, they're not very confident. Oh. So I want you to take, this, take that language out. And so instead of saying, this is a silly idea, I want you to just say, my idea is X, Y, and Z. I don't have much experience. I want you to say, with the experience I have, da, 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 da. this is what I think. If you're going to give something a go, don't preface it with this is, I'm really bad at this. I'm going to give this a go. And this is my idea. When it comes to changing your mind, I hereby give you permission to change your mind every single day of the week. If you are talking to an employer and say, well, I kind of am thinking about doing this and maybe, but you know, like I might change my mind, take it out. Because on that day, this is what you think. By opening your mouth, you're saying, this is what I think today. And I give you permission to change your mind tomorrow, okay? Don't undermine yourself. Don't undermine what you're about to, what you're about to say. And if you find yourself saying sorry all the time when you're not actually apologising, save sorry for when you've done something wrong, yeah? Speaking your mind, talking out loud is not doing anything wrong. Asking for help is not doing anything wrong. Asking for someone's time is not doing anything wrong. So stop apologising. So what instead I want you to say is thank you so much for your time today. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you listened to my, my ideas. Thank you for the opportunity to share, share my ideas with you. If you're running late, I really appreciate your patience. Um, I'm here, let's get started. So I want you to have a real think about this. This one is a bugbear of mine and my team know it well. And I want to start removing this stuff from people's language and I'd like to get in early. Um, if you can go into your professional career sharing your ideas and knowing that your thoughts, your feelings, your contributions are valid, it will benefit you in the long run because that's the truth. And once you start noticing it within in yourself, I want you to start calling it out to others and reminding people that they don't need to apologise for their ideas, their contributions are valid too. So when it comes to public speaking, we public speak all the time. It doesn't need to be just a presentation. So when you're networking and you're opening your mouth to introduce yourself, it counts. How can you make it count? What messages can you get across? And when you're introducing yourself, it, whether it be LinkedIn, whether it be a a networking face-to-face -face session, I want you to include a call to action. So instead of just saying, hi, I'm Sophie and I work for FDM, I'm not giving you anything, but by saying, hi, I'm Sophie, I work for, F for FDM, and I'm really keen to talk to students to hear about what their career ambitions are. You automatically know that you can tell me what your career ambition is because I've given you a call to action. So have a think about giving a purpose to why you're meeting someone, and that will actually make the interaction less awkward. 
of course, public speaking can be speeches. So public speaking um, in speech form can look like you're informing someone, you could be persuading someone, you could be entertaining someone, all are very valid, you could be doing a mix. Always, always understand what it is that you're trying to achieve. And then you need to design your speech around that. What is the purpose that you are, are there for and how are you gonna get that across? You could be presenting ideas at a meeting. That's public speaking as well. You could be standing up in front of three people or 20 people in a meeting. You might know all of them. You might know none of them. Your contribution to a meeting simply by being in the room and having a seat at the table means that you have a voice. And coming into the professional world, you need to start contributing that voice. So have a think about what you'd like to say and contribute value. Your ideas are valid. When it comes to Zoom meetings, this is another case of public speaking. Um, and it's one that you're going to need to become fairly familiar with. And I, I can already tell you guys are all across it. Um, but opening your mouth in a virtual setting matters and you need to know the etiquette and you need to know, um, be familiar with the things and you need to deal with technical glitches um, and, and ride through them and be okay with that. So be aware of the differences between face-to-face -face and Zoom and adjust your message accordingly. And remember, you still have an audience out there. So you still need them to engage even in an online setting. And finally, I need you to think about across all mediums, the sort of brand that you want to develop every time you open up your mouth. And I would encourage your brand to be real and authentic to you. I would encourage you not to put on anything false, but actually get to know yourself, get to know your values and make it clear and simple for people to understand. Put your values front and centre in everything that you do. And so every time you open your mouth, that is the type of quality that you're putting out there. Um, this will come over time. This is not something you can click your fingers, write down a few drop points and suddenly have a brand. Um, it will develop over time, but have a think. Every time you open your mouth in front of an audience, you are developing your brand because you're developing awareness about you. So they are some very, very rapid tips because I want to keep us to time and I want to give you guys a chance to have a go at this. So I'm going to now move on to the prompts. There's three prompts you can choose from. First up, you've got an elevator pitch. Now, what you witnessed at the beginning of this workshop was my team giving you their elevator pitches. It included a little bit of their background. It included who they are. It included what they're doing now. And it even included a little bit of spark, sometimes a little bit of things that you wouldn't normally expect. And I generally encourage something unique, something that adds a little bit of humor maybe, um, and something that will make you memorable. Yeah, so imagine in your elevator pitch, you are introducing yourself to a recruiter. We've got a whole team of recruiters for you here. Um, and you wanna make a good impression. You want them to remember your name and you want to, for them to remember um, why, you think, why you think you would add value to their company, yeah? So in this scenario, you can pretend that we are recruiters for Google. You can pretend we're recruiters for Atlassian. You can pretend we're recruiters for CBA. I don't mind. Um, so you can shift who the company is, um, but we're recruiters. And you want to tell us who you are, what you stand for, why you're interested in connecting with us and you want to be remembered. So a handy thing to start practicing. Second prompt, what energizes you? This one's a really um, important question for me. I think when it comes to this question, I think this is a real goal for everybody in their careers. Um, rather than having a goal of a certain role title or a certain management position um, or becoming a subject matter ac expert in X, Y, and Z, I think discovering what energizes you and how that evolves through your lifetime is actually really important. So when I say what en energizes you, I mean activities that make you feel buzzy, yeah? Activities that you get excited to start. Activities that... Um, you think about when you daydream. Um, and so they are often referred to as your passions. Um, so passions can energize you, but sometimes simple um, activities of interaction can. can. So I, I get energized uh, when I'm creative. I get energized when I deliver workshops. I get buzzy afterwards. Um, so that's what energizes me. 
This prompt is about telling us about what energizes you. Um, something that motivates you in life, gives you energy when you do it, and explain what it means to you, um, what's behind it, where did you discover it. Lastly, a bit of fun, what's your secret talent? So I don't mind what it is. In fact, the more off the wall it is and the more surprising it is, the better. So it could be the fact that you write romance fiction, you could juggle, you could be the most amazing karaoke singer. Um, you could even balance your, a spoon on your nose. I'm talking, you could be a great dog trainer. You could um, be amazing. You could be an amazing Monopoly banker. Um, I don't care what your secret talent is, but what you need to do is tell us how you discovered the talent and what does it say about you? So does it say you're creative? Does it say you're ambitious? Does it say um, that you are social? You're a social creature. So all of these prompts are, are really important in different ways. So I know the secret talent sounds a bit funny compared to the elevator pitch, which sounds very business. But all of these prompts actually help you uh, talk about yourself um, and become more confident in talking about your values in different ways. It's really important that when you talk to other people um, that you can let them know what energizes you or you can... Um, tell people about knowing about yourself and demonstrating it through even like the most oddest of activities um, can say that you're ambitious or creative or something. So all of these prompts will actually help you pull some language out and create some stories um, and give you a chance um, to practice these um, public speaking in front of people. And the recruiters and I are happy to give you some feedback about what we see and about where you can take some of these in the future. So without further ado, I will hand back over um, and we will go into breakout rooms, I think, for the next little while. Um, so this is where I need you to be interactive oh. as a group and feel free to use the chat function. Um, that's okay. Um, or if you want to pop your hand up um, to speak, that's okay. But what I want to ask you now is from that experience, what, what did you learn? What did you enjoy and what did you find challenging? Now, don't feel the need to answer all three questions, um, but if there is a particular thing that jumped out at you when I asked those, those questions, it would be really helpful to share with, with other people because they probably have similar experiences and maybe we can just talk about what that might mean um, and maybe have any extra advice around that. So feel free to use the chat function, otherwise pop up a hand if you want to speak. Hello. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> Sorry, I um I would love to share my screen, but I'm just a bit shy. <laughs> okay, but, not a problem. Yeah. Um, but the thing that I learned, um, that I was able to learn from that breakout room was that um I, there was a peer that spoke in the group and she talked about where um she was energized by people, uh, people that are surrounded surrounding her like around her and how she was able to make it to uni and she found uh, she came upon this um uh, like talented people where she like uh, and when she goes on to LinkedIn profiles and she'll be seeing these people that are doing so much compared to myself or like um yeah to myself and she would constantly be admired by those people and it motivates her to do better and it's just um, coming a look, just hearing from her experience and what she thinks is made, made me um, feel motivated to, to do better as well. And it just um, being able to learn from my peers that are around is very helpful. And um, I was able to learn that, um, yeah, being um, sometimes being around by talented people and like, um, that are always going beyond the, uh, my where I'm standing. Um, but from those people, you can always be motivated and push yourself harder and just learn from those experiences to do better in the future. And uh, someday you'll be able to become like those people. Yeah. So. Thank you. That was, <laughs> that's such a beautiful thing to share because um, I... I'm so thank you so much for being a good audience member because part of public speaking is having an audience 
And thank you so much for listening to your peers um, and giving that really beautiful feedback. And also I'd like to point out something beautiful about you. The fact that you took her ambition and her um, sort of aspirations and the wonderful things that she was doing as inspiration and motivation to go out there and do more and you hoped that others would too is that's such a beautiful quality about you because some people get intimidated because they get caught <laughs> in the, they get caught in the comparison trap um and and it's that's a death trap because no one's ever going to win mm-hmm. um so thank you so much for being supportive of your peers um i'm i'm so glad that you were in the audience for that person and um and that's a really beautiful quality so maintain that because um, I think I, I brought to mind a TikTok sort of thing that's doing the rounds around, hey, where, where did you hear? Women are supporting each other now. Yeah. Um, so, so get on track, you know. It reminded me of that. Um, and you're demonstrating really beautifully just that. So I'm really glad that you got inspired tonight. No, oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Was there any other ideas around what you learned, what you enjoyed? Did anybody experience any difficulties? Um, I think I'll share. Um, so firstly, what did I learn? Uh, I learned a lot from your presentation as well, Sophie. So thanks for sharing all those great tips. Um, in the breakout rooms, I learned different techniques my uh, peers use to make their speeches stand out and make me feel very engaged. So someone used a storytelling technique to start off their speech, which I found was very, very gripping. Um, and I also, um, someone had a really beautiful transition between like um, their um, aspirations and their experiences and like what they look forward to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, what did I enjoy? I just enjoyed listening to their speeches and something I found very challenging personally was staying on topic for um, my speech. <laughs> <laughs> staying on topic can be can be tough. That's why it's good to do the planning uh, and do this like a script and then throw away the script. But yeah, it's important to stay on topic, but don't worry, Shudra. I, um, I sometimes go off on a tangent too. I'm prone to a good tangent. Um, so yeah, we just have to rein it in every now and again. Thanks so much for sharing. No worries. Was there anybody else that wanted to share before we wrap things up for the evening? Uh, really sure good I feedback. Can, yeah. I can find what I found challenging. So what I found challenging was so I found that sharing about topics that are really close to me was really challenging. Mm-hmm. So I, I felt really reserved in everything I was going to say. So I, like when I was trying to think about what to say, I was like, oh, should I say this? Or like, should I not say it? And that, yeah, I just found it. Eventually, I guess, um, Bella helped me to just like, I guess, spit it out and it worked out fine. Yeah. And, and how did that, it, so what I'm hearing is that you, there was a certain amount of vulnerability required right, in each of those prompts to, to share something about yourself with a room full of strangers. How yeah. did it feel when you got pushed past and you just, just went ahead and shared? What what was the emotion? Um, I think, like, once you start saying one or two things that were, like, a bit out of your comfort zone, is like, I guess you could do embarrassed because kind of dropping and everything else just comes out after it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's, like, once you get past the first one or two sentences and it really starts heating, like it really starts going. And did anything bad happen? Uh, no. No. And did anything good happen? Yeah, I got to learn a lot about public speaking and I feel a little more confident now. Well done. So you can see I'm, I'm, I'm emphasising vulnerability is actually really hard, um, but it's how we make connections and it's how we get people to relate to us. Um, so I want to thank you, Raymond, for being vulnerable because it's hard. Um, and I'm sure your your audience appreciated that you got there in the end. Um, so thank you for being brave because vulnerability is hard. Um, but if you can be just the right amount of vulnerable, you leave uh, room for people to connect and relate to you. Um, so I'm sure it was worthwhile. And you can see nothing bad happened on the other side. Um, so well done. Thanks, Raymond. Thank you. Is there any other feedback last bits? Last questions before we wrap up. Okay, guys, it is approaching seven o'clock. So what I'll do is I will just move to some key take home messages that I want you to take from this evening. Obviously it was rapid fire. It was a really quick session. You are not now granted, you know, perfect public speakers. But what I hope I've given you is a bit of permission 
to practice, to grow into it, and it's okay to be nervous. So key take-home messages I want you to remember, nervous is normal. It's normal, and you can even talk about it. Um, something I spoke to my room about is that um, in my very earliest public speaking debut, um, in year 10, we had to get um, assessed on public speaking, and I spoke about how nervous I was, and I displayed everything that was going on for me. So it's okay if you have a shaky voice. It's okay um, if you you know, lose your breath, um, persevere, it won't be remembered forever um, and you will get better. And nervous is normal, everybody's nervous. Um, keep it simple, script, put in the plan so that you can try to keep to point, <laughs> but then throw the script away. You come across far more natural if you're not reading. Um, and, and get out of your own head, stop thinking about yourself, start thinking about your audience and how you're gonna engage them. And then finally, practice. Make sure that if, it, if it's time to deliver something really important, it's not the first time that it's come out of your mouth. Do not rubbish yourself. Um, and I want you now to catch yourself when you start apologising things that you shouldn't apologise for. Um, and I want you to replace it um, with an appreciation for people's time, appreciation for people's patience. And if you're opening your mouth and you have thoughts to contribute and feelings, they're valid. Um, and you need to step into that space um, with some confidence. You don't need to qualify or, in fact, disqualify it. If you hear other people do it, I want you to call it out and say, don't apologise for that. It's your, your ideas are really welcome. Yeah, we need to start calling it out. Rubbishing yourself is not humility. It's not humility, but it, we've been, um, society's conditioned to think that it is. Um, know your purpose. Please, 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 for all important communication, Go back to that blank slate for me. Know your message, know your purpose. Um, if you're introducing yourself, if you're giving an elevator pitch, know the reason why you want to connect with this person. It could be to expand your network um, and to follow their, their career progression or connect in future. It could be really simple, but know the reason because that will help them know how to connect with you in return. Um, so give your audience a call to action, even if you're introducing over LinkedIn. Please remember your audience, yeah? Remember that communication is not one way. There needs to be a receiver. And if the receiver doesn't understand what you say, isn't interested in what you say, or if they get lost, communication breakdown. You must remember who your audience is. So you must adjust your message for that audience and the mode that you're delivering it in and think, how am I going to engage them? How am I going to keep them with me for the journey, particularly if you want them to remember anything uh, about what you have to say? And finally, some physicality points. Um, I mentioned this to my group as well. Um, breathing uh, is critical to life, right? It's also critical to regulating our nervous system. And when we get nervous, we get a shot of adrenaline. And what that tends to get us ready for is fight, flight, freeze. And, um, and so our heart will pick up just in case we need to run from the tiger. And we don't need to run from the tiger. We just need to open our mouth and say hello. Um, so what, will, what helps is slowing your breathing down and telling your body that you're safe. So take a big deep breath at the beginning of any big presentation or any big time where you feel you're, you're getting a bit nervous and you can hear or feel that you're a bit shaky because it will actually tell your body that you're safe and it'll start to regulate your nervous system. Um, so if in a moment where you're about to give a big presentation or even on Zoom or particularly in an interview, just say, um, if you need to, you know, make a reason why you're going to pause, otherwise you can just take a breath, but you can say, just going to take a quick breath because I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm really excited to be here today. That breath will pass by in a blip for your audience, but it, if it helps you regulate yourself and deliver more calmly, it'll be worth gold. Dress to impress. I want you to feel good about yourself. I don't mean wear Armani suits. I mean wear something that makes you feel good. So if wearing colour makes you feel good, wear the colour. If wearing a collar makes you feel good, if wearing makeup makes you feel good, if doing your hair makes you feel good, if you're connecting with new people and you're speaking and you want to be confident, dress in a way that embodies you and makes you feel confident. Yeah. And finally, Stand tall, and by this I mean take up space. What you have to say and what you feel are valid, and I want you to embody that. So catch yourself when you start 
taking up less space and your eye line drops or you look or you start looking towards the site and you start cutting off engagement because um, that's really hard for the audience to engage with. Someone who takes up space, someone who projects their energy towards the screen or towards their audience is open to connect with, yeah? And so you need to embody that. You need to project your voice, you need to project your energy and you need to take up space because if you're contributing, if you've got an audience listening to you, it is valid. So hold some physicality around your message as well. They're my key messages. I think it is seven o'clock or just after. Oh, seven o'clock on the dot. We're finished. Um, and so I'm really glad that we can finish on time. And I will hand back over um, to the lovely Wit team um, who might have some final words. Uh, yep. Yeah, thank you for wrapping up with a reflection on the breakout session and sharing some key take home messages um, for us. And thank you to everyone for attending our Wit um, X FDM Group Presents Public Speaking Workshop. And a special thank you to our FDM group representatives for co-hosting this event with us. We hope that it has granted you all the chance to gain some valuable insights on your public speaking and general interpersonal skills. The WIT team strives to produce high quality events, so we greatly appreciate any feedback from today's event. Please fill out your feedback form linked in the Zoom chat or by scanning the QR code. Thank you again for joining us tonight and have a good night.